Welcome everybody. Um, this is the second session today. We have Sandro Matos, the Director of Analytics at Mer Merkel Aquila, here to talk to us about preventing human trafficking through the power of analytics. Sandro is a senior data science at Merkel Aquila. He's got nine years of experience working with a vast range of industries and projects. He specializes in machine learning and has worked with different tools and platforms such as Python, SAS, SQL and R. He likes to give back to society and is leading a pro bono initiative at Merkel Aquila with a charity in which a team of analysts and data science scientists volunteer their skills to help the organization with data related tasks. I'll hand over to Sandro now to take us through his presentation. Thank you very much. Let's just share my screen. Perfect. Thank you. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Sandro, uh, and yeah, today uh, I'll be talking about uh, this initiative that myself and some of my colleagues in my company uh, have been involved with a with a charity uh, to help prevent human trafficking through the power of analytics using R. <coughs> so, agenda for today. So, I'll start with just some um, uh, more background uh, about myself, uh, my company, and the charity that uh, we are partners with. Um, we'll talk about um, four key pieces of work uh, that we have done um, over the, the partnership um, and just finish it with a final summary um, about uh, yeah, why R is so important um, for this particular project. Um, so starting with some background about myself. Um, so yeah, my name is Sandro Matos. Uh, I'm original from Portugal. Uh, I'm a senior data scientist, um, and I've been working for Merkel for three and a half years now. Um, I love traveling. Unfortunately, I haven't done that uh, that much this year. Um, eating and playing video games. Um, I'm also a big Eurovision Song Contest lover, and I'm a huge fan of R. Uh, in my company, we have the R and the Python gangs, and I'm definitely part of the, the R one. Um, so about my company. Um, so when I joined, uh, my company was called uh, Aquila Insight um, and it was established in 2012 and was acquired by Marco in 2017. Um, and we are just in the process of being fully integrated just now and by the end of 2020 uh, we will be called uh, Merkel Analytics. Um, so Merkel is a global company and the entire world they employ uh, more than 2,500 data scientists and data engineers. And in the Aquila side of the business, we have around 130 data analysts, scientists, and data engineers. Um, so yeah, our main proposition is to create intelligent, appropriate analytical solutions to achieve our clients' objectives and drive value. So basically, we take data from uh, our clients and we uh, generate value and insights that uh, drive value to, to the business. Um, we work with a different uh, range of clients uh, from several industries. Um, from oil and gas to retail, transports, uh, financial services, telecommunications, uh, energy, insurance, automotive. So basically all types of, of industries and all types of projects. Um, and yeah, on the right here, you can see uh, some awards that we have won as well over the years, um, including uh, four data Q awards that we've won uh, over the last couple of years, including one for best in, uh, data and analytics team for the project I'll be talking uh, about um, in this session. So just a little bit about uh, the journey of, of this idea and how this uh, became a reality. So, so in our company, um, so initially Aquila, we always had uh, uh, this idea of having crowds. Um, so basically crowds are just um, a group of people that get together with an uh, internal objective in mind. So they just create an internal initiative. And one of the crowds is the giving back crowd. Uh, so a group of analysts just got together uh, to try to um, promote giving back to the, the society. And initially we had some initiatives like fundraising and, and just trying, trying to get some environmental responsibility across our offices as well to try to, to make sure that we were as green as possible. Um, but we thought, yeah, we had a group of analysts who specialize on uh, driving value from data. And um, so we can do something different. We can also share our skills. Um, so that's where this idea of skill sharing uh, came to our minds. Uh, we wanted to have this pro bono initiative uh, where we will share our um, um, 
expertise in analytics with a with a charity and yeah that's where we found them start the traffic and started the partnership with them or stt um so stt is a global charity and they are pioneers on the cause of intelligence-led prevention of human trafficking and i'll talk a bit more uh, about uh, stop the traffic in just a minute so just a bit of a timeline on the journey so in january 2018 uh this skills-based volunteering was an idea. And in February 2018, we presented a plan for a pilot to the leadership team. Uh, we've explored different charities uh, for a few months and we identified Stop the Traffic as the right partner. And in July 2018, um, we started the pilot with the research and intelligence team uh, at Stop the Traffic. And during the pilot, we did a few different projects, including uh, data audit and analysis of the data set uh, that Stop Traffic had. Uh, we've also introduced them to uh, some social listening, um, and we did some training as well to upskill the team. And in March 2019, we've considered that uh, the pilot was a success, and we extended the partnership for another year. Um, and yeah, over the course of that year, uh, we did a few other pieces of uh, work, including a text analytics piece. Uh, we've used some Reddit analysis, uh, some Reddit data uh, for some analysis as well. We supported them with some Power BI uh, questions. Uh, we've used Google Trends as well uh, to get them some additional insights, and we continue doing some training. And in March 2020, um, we um, got um, Stop the Traffic to meet us in our uh, offices in London, and we uh, had a brainstorming session to uh, plan uh, what was coming ahead, and we have agreed to extend the partnership until April 2021. Uh, and since then, we started we started working as well uh, with the comms team. And so yeah, we've been now uh, working together for over two years. Um, and yeah, we are not working with two different teams: the research and intelligence team and the comms team. So um, just some background about uh, human slavery, human trafficking and modern slavery and why they are still um, big problems. Um, so slavery did not disappear when it was abolished uh, two centuries ago. Um, it was just forced to uh, be an underground business. And the rise of the internet and technology have made it easy uh, for traffickers um, to basically operate. Um, human trafficking and modern slavery are thought to be amongst the most widespread crimes in the world. And to put that into perspective, uh, it's thought that around 24 million people are trapped in forced lab labor uh, by human trafficking worldwide, which is approximately uh, the population of Australia. Um, human trafficking earns profits of roughly uh, $150 billion uh, a year which is almost four times the revenue of that Facebook had in 2018. Even though we are talking uh, a big number here, uh, only uh, 15,000 prosecutions and 9,000 convictions for human trafficking happened globally in 2016. Um, so yeah, there are still uh, lots to be done. And that's why Stop the Traffic is such an important organization. So just a quick summary on uh, of uh, what Stop the Traffic uh, who are the stop the traffic. Um, <clears throat> so their main objective is to work to combat human trafficking through intelligence-led prevention. And basically what that is, is uh, they believe if we understand how and where human trafficking is taking place, um, we can prevent it. Um, and to do that, they believe that if we have a coordinated way of gathering and sharing data, we can yeah, just have a coordinated way of uh, analyzing um, the entire uh, global data and just having a global perspective of um, human trafficking. <coughs> Excuse me. So some of the things that uh, they do, so they organize awareness courses for different types of audiences about human trafficking. Um, they also um, have a global supply chain risk mapping for large companies who might be implicated in trafficking without really knowing. Um, they work with some partner, partners uh, in some local uh, initiatives, so for example, financial institutions, law enforcement, government. Um, they also organize tailored social media campaigns in areas that they believe maybe um, there may be trafficking there or there might be hotspots or for particular types of um, people. Um, and, and this is one of the key things that we've been helping them on, on the uh, social media campaigns. Um, and they also collect global stories and connect them and build a rich picture of human trafficking hotspots and trends in the world. 
So just to finish the background, so why uh, stop the traffic and why we felt that they were the right partner for us. Um, and we had three criteria in our mind and basically stop the traffic met all uh, these three criteria. So they shared our ambition uh, of using data to address a pressing issue. Uh, they already had some data and they had data in their minds. So we, we had room to add value because there was data. Um, and But they were not so big um, that they would have the funds to have their own analytics team. Um, so it could actually make a difference. So yeah, so we found that this was the perfect way of using uh, our free time um, as personal development and while well, helping a great cause, uh, because of course we can use these as well to learn new tools and uh, just work with different types of, of data. Um, yeah. Going into the key work streams of the of the project. So so these are the four key work streams I'll be talking about. Uh, so the first one, uh, data audit. Uh, so how we uh, yeah explore the data uh, that some uh, volunteers collected for stop the traffic. Uh, the second one is social listening. How we've used Twitter and Reddit data um, to help stop the traffic track uh, what people are talking about regarding human trafficking on social media. Um, also, text analytics piece and um, how we uh, built a categorization model for um, text, uh, Facebook comments in this case, um, and then just a quick summary of the things that we've been doing so far with the comms team regarding digital uh, analytics. And yeah, in all of these four work streams are uh, played a part on them. Starting with the data audit, and uh, first thing was uh, checking if the data was fit for analysis. Uh, so the data that we had was uh, basically data that was collected from uh, volunteers that stopped the traffic uh, from online articles, and they were saving that information in an Excel uh, spreadsheet. Uh, so because there were different people collecting data and just saving it in an Excel file, there was no standard analytical uh, format. Um, so we had to explore to see which fields were available to try to find inconsistencies and see if it was fit for analysis um, and yeah, just trying to identify any format issues. So after we identified that, we then cleaned the data as much as possible to try to keep the data consistent, uh, remove any noise or duplicate, uh, duplicated records that we had and, and yeah, create a new format of the data that was fit for analysis and I'll uh, give a bit more detail on the cleaning process in, in just a second. Uh, and finally, just making sure that everything was kept in a way that could be just run uh, if we had more data in the future. Uh, and yeah, it was easy uh, to automate. So of course, having a, an R script was, was perfect for this. Um, so yeah, so a bit more detail on, on the cleaning uh, process. Uh, so the first one was to make sure that uh, we had unique uh, incidents per row. Uh, the second one, just making sure that some of the fields were kept consistent by using lookup tables. Uh, and for example, uh, if we had the country where the incident happened, uh, we saw some examples that um, the volunteers would write US, USA, United States, United States of America. And of course, as a data point of view, this is seen as four different values, but we know that uh, those are the same uh, country. So we just use a lookup table to make sure that if it's one of these four values, it just changes to be one unique uh, value. And also we've used some uh, packages to, to try to correct misspelling mistakes in some of the names of the countries um, and cities. Uh, yeah, we also try to introduce some standardization. Again, we have different people filling in these uh, spreadsheets. So for example, for missing values, some people would write unknowns, some people would write missing, some people would leave the field blank. And um, so we wanted to make sure that everything uh, was consistent. Uh, and also trying to make sure that the format of the fields were uh, standardized. So if you have, for example, a field that is uh, the age of the victims of the incident, uh, it should be a number. So we need to make sure that we don't include the word years and we don't have any other values there. And finally, just uh, making sure that we change the format uh, to make everything um, to keep all the variants that some of the fields had. So for example, going back to the age uh, of the victims, uh, sometimes when you had more than one victim, people just write free text saying one victim had this age, the other one had this age. Uh, so instead of just having one column uh, for age, uh, we decided to have 
several columns for the different number of victims in each um, age group. So in that way, we have more columns, but we capture all that variance uh, and we know that then we can use uh, the fields for analysis, the, the data set for analysis. Um, so yeah, so the key outcome from this uh, piece of work um, and the recommendations that we did was that uh, software traffic now is collecting data in a different way and uh, that is more fit for analysis, so it will help them get insights um, about uh, hotspots and trends. So the next piece of work is regarding social listening. So as I mentioned, Stop the Traffic does um, use social media frequently to raise awareness um, across different audiences. So we thought that it could be interesting to use uh, open source data uh, to try to, tra to track what people are talking about on social media regarding this um, subject. So we, we wanted to use uh, Twitter data uh, to follow particular keywords and hashtags that they the Stop the Traffic was using in campaigns and also to follow Stop the Traffic's own uh, timeline. So we've explored two different packages uh, in R. So the first one was called Twitter package. Um, and it seemed very popular online and the one that most people used for these, but unfortunately um, was quite old. So the tweets were still truncated to the old 140 characters. So we were losing some text. Um, so that's where we found the R tweet package that was not as popular as, as tweet R. Uh, so it was more difficult to find sample code, uh, but it had a very good online uh, support and we were able um, to reach out to the developer of this package and, and get some information and also included a very comprehensive set of variables. And finally, uh, some Reddit data as well. Um, so we've used the package Reddit Extractor um, to get some Reddit posts and comments um, that included terms such as human trafficking and stop the traffic. So Reddit is a very good platform for people to comment on some piece of news or to tell their own stories. So we thought it was a very good source as well uh, to try to find some insights that uh, they would miss otherwise. Um, and yeah, the, the way that we used it was to load into Power BI um, to, to build a dashboard. So yeah, so in terms of the outputs uh, for the tweets, uh, we've used the, the package Word Cloud just to so top the, stop the traffic was able to see the key topics that people um, were tweeting about uh, just by looking at the visualization and the R script, um, we used it in Power BI uh, to build a Reddit dashboard. And um, so this is an example of a word cloud that we built. So uh, they could see that for a particular period of time, uh, people were using um, particular terms. And here, for example, this was run last year and we can see that Epstein was one of the key uh, topics when people were tweeting about um, trafficking. And, and yeah, uh, R has a very good integration with Power BI. So it was very easy uh, to just uh, integrate both scripts and then do all the, the visualizations in Power BI. Uh, yeah, so this work uh, has been helping stop the traffic and uh, understand better the trends of what people are, are talking about on social media regarding human trafficking. Uh, and also this is just a small part of uh, a bigger piece that we are working on uh, that will be a social listening tool uh, that will include uh, several uh, social media platform data. So the third one uh, is this uh, text analytics um, piece. So, so basically the data that we received were comments that Stop the Traffic was manually collecting um, from their campaigns and they were manually categorizing them into different sentiment categories uh, that uh, had some meaning for them. For example, awareness, prejudice, um, if people provided information. So we had several different categories and their objective was to have a way of categorizing them automatically so they didn't have to have someone, every campaign go going through every comment manually and um, yeah, and categorizing it. So the key thing that we did here was data prep. So we just had raw comments and we had to derive some features. And so we've captured some feature, some general text uh, features, uh, such as how many words we had on the comment to see how long the comment was, and trying to see the writing style, uh, if people are using lots of punctuation, if people are writing all in capitals, uh, because we can uh, try to see which sentiment they, they have uh, from that. And after that, we've used the package TM um, to clean the data. Um, we removed stop words. Uh, we kept alphanumeric characters only. 
And we've also considered stemming, uh, which basically just groups words that are similar together. So for example, happy and happiness, uh, when we apply stemming, they are just considered to be the same word. And after cleaning the data, we've identified keywords that we saw were common uh, across comments um, to see if they could differentiate that people were using more a particular word if they were in a particular category uh, of comments and, and others. Um, and after that, in terms of modeling, what we've used was uh, several logistic regressions uh, to try to predict every category. And um, so basically the output would be for new comments, uh, we'd have the probability of them uh, belonging to each category. So we'd have a new comment and we'd have 50, they would have a 50% probability of being of the category awareness, 20% uh, probability of being on, on the category uh, prejudice. And after that, we'd take the category that has the highest probability. Uh, and the final output would just be uh, the distribution of the different sentiment categories uh, on those comments. Um, so yeah, so these he's provided uh, a tool uh, for sort of traffic to, to try to categorize um, new comments uh, so they don't have to go manually through all of them in the future. Uh, and also, uh, this is just a piece of text categorization. So actually, they now have the code and are thinking about, <coughs> excuse me, how they can apply these to similar problems. Um, for example, uh, online articles, try to categorize them into the different types of um, exploitation. <clears throat> and finally, the last one, uh, just a summary of the work that we've been doing with the comms team using Google Analytics data. Um, so one of the first things that we've done was to uh, track a few events on the website and that they were not getting insights on previously. So for example, if people are, um, if users are scrolling uh, halfway through the pages that they are in, um, what people are searching on the search bar on the website, if they are clicking or not on the outbound links. Um, so we've tra started tracking uh, all of these on the website um, and we've used R to analyze and see um, what events people are doing in the different pages. Um, also, we've built a donation tracker um, so we've developed that in Power BI, but we did some data preparation in R. Um, so right now um, they are looking at some new metrics regarding donations, such as donations per visitor and average donated amount over time. Uh, so on month on month, they can see how that uh, is, uh, varies. And also um, when they are preparing some uh, changes to uh, the donation form or to the website, uh, they can use now this tracker um, to see if it has the impact that they, they wanted. Um, yeah, we've also been doing uh, some campaign analysis. So when Sorta Traffic um, runs a, a new campaign, they usually create um, a new landing page on the website um, to raise awareness. Uh, and they wanted uh, our help on trying to get some additional insights um, apart from just the number of views that that page had. Um, so we have been tracking the if, if people are scrolling through the pages or not, um, if people are clicking on the outbound links, but also what, what type of audiences are accessing the page, because usually they are targeted for particular audiences. So we look at things like country and um, the language on the device that they are using, just to try to see if they are reaching the audience that uh, they wanted. And finally, we've also been looking at what are the key uh, journeys that the users uh, follow on the website. Um, so which page they land on the website, what's the page that they visit next, <coughs> excuse me, and, and what's the page that they exit the website on. And just to find a way of uh, trying to understand what people are searching on the website and just getting some insights of um, what shortcuts it, they might need to, to add to a particular page, but because you can see that people land on that page, but they actually want to uh, access a, a different uh, page on the website. So yeah, so the work that we've been doing uh, with the comms team um, has been helping uh, stop the traffic, uh, get more insights of what the users do on the website uh, and improve future content and features um, for the website. Sandra. Sorry, Sandra, yep. five minutes. Yep. Um, so just the final summary on why R has been so important um, for this partnership. Um, so this is a pro bono initiative, as I mentioned in the beginning. So having a powerful analytical tool available for free makes R a great choice. 
And R is the flexibility we needed because we've been doing completely different types of projects from using APIs to text mining to visualization. Um, also, it's very easy to adapt our uh, program and replicate it for similar problems. So we have the text categorization with Facebook comments, but we can just have tweets, for example, as input um, and it will work. So we don't, we don't need to uh, basically do everything from the beginning. And also it's very easy to uh, just and over the, the scripts, we just need to send the scripts uh, and, and take stop the traffic on how to run them and they just need to have R installed. So yeah, thank you very much. And yeah, you have the websites here for my company and for stop the traffic as well, if you want to, to have a look. Thank, thank you, you so much. That was truly inspiring, which has very much come through in the comments that we've had. Oh, thank you. So lots of thanks. Um, from me and from everybody in the chat. We've got a couple of questions which we've just about got time to fit in. Perfect. The first one is Word Cloud do not consider topics of interest with low frequencies. Is there any way to extract those interesting keywords? Yeah, that's that's a very, very good point. Um, so we are still working on creating the social uh, listening tool that will try to, um, to have more insights. It's just a, a word cloud. Um, and that's definitely something that they are quite interested in as well. Um, and actually, we, we ran a session uh, last week on just in general text analytics and the things that we do. Um, and they are quite interested in just looking at n-grams, um, which are basically words that um, come uh, together. So just to see key things that people are talking about. So maybe they are not as common, but they can be very informative. So that's a, a, very, a very good uh, idea. Yeah, definitely. And the second question we've got is, which packages are used for digital analytics? So for that one, we are just using base R uh, mostly. Um, so we just uh, get the data from Google Analytics and we just do some manipulation um, to add some new features or to just calculate some uh, very easy insights, um, such as just volumes and just some counts. And uh, so we've been using and no particular packages for that. So we are manually uh, downloading the data from Google Analytics as a CSV and just loading it to our. Brilliant, thank you so much. Um, the audience you. have been blown away by this um, truly inspiring piece of work. So thank you and I will see you all in the next session. Perfect. Thank you.